how does this relate to what we actually care about? This is a theorem that says there's some functions that seem expensive, but expensive here is the size of the circuit. And what we really should care about is cost. How do you measure cost? Well, we've measured cost so far today, number of lines in a NAND circ program. It's a really precise definition. In other classes, you probably measured cost as some notion of running time. Maybe you counted steps. Maybe you had some notion of what you can do in each step. Is either of those the right way to measure cost? Definitely not. When we're talking about cost, we should be talking about money. Any other cost, if we can convert between, say, time and space, then if the cost is high in time but low in space, well, we don't care. Right? We can convert. We don't know, unless we can say this is the fundamental cost in some important way, we don't know if we're measuring the right thing. Right? And the cost of computing, well, that's really easy to convert to money these days. You can go on Amazon's webpage or Microsoft's or your favorite cloud computing server and find out exactly what it costs to compute, and that changes every hour. These prices are based on demand. You can buy a certain amount of computing for $0.0084 per hour. That's probably not very much, but the most expensive nodes, you're paying a few dollars an hour. So if you wanted to measure costs like that, these kinds of asymptotic costs might not help us very much. And you can see the costs vary a lot. They vary whether you're running Linux or Windows, like the cheaper ones are running Linux. And they vary where you are. If you are in Korea or you want your computing in Korea, compared to wanting it in Virginia, you're paying about five times as much. Why would anyone pay five times as much to have their computing done in Korea than to have it done in Ashland? Yeah. Uh, it could be, like there could be jurisdictional reasons you don't want to have your data exposed to the US. There's people that do think about that. They probably don't want to use Amazon then if you don't trust the US very well. Yeah, what else? Um, Good, yeah, so space is time, right? Depending on where you compute it, if you are serving customers in Korea and you want low latency, you want your computing done close to them. If you're serving humans, you want low latency and trip time around the world matters. By plane, it's a lot, but by data, it only travels about a third the speed of light. Really slow. It takes time to travel. Speed of light should be about 53 milliseconds. Right? That's about the best you can do if you had direct fiber between your two endpoints. Latency matters. The other thing is bandwidth. Bandwidth is actually really expensive. The main cost of most computing today is not computing. It's bandwidth. So if you have a lot of data that you need to move across the country, you should buy a truck and fill it up with hard drives. That's still the cheapest way to to move a lot of data. These are not what we're measuring. We're not measuring the cloud computing cost of computing these functions. What's the closest real cost if we're talking about sizes of circuits as the thing we're measuring? What's the closest sort of dollar cost that that corresponds to? So it really doesn't have anything to do with bandwidth or whether we're computing in Korea or Virginia. The size of the circuit does have something to do with the amount of energy that we need to use to execute the circuit. That is related to the number of gates that we have to flip. So the size of the circuit is going to have a direct connection to energy. So in that sense, it's, it's actually maybe a pretty good proxy for some things. That assumes that we've actually got a custom circuit. If we're actually running it as code or we're running it on a processor, then the cost to execute that as code is not going to be that closely related to the size of the circuit. If we care about time, how good a proxy is the size of the circuit for time? What property of the circuit tells us how long it takes to execute the circuit if we only have one execution? Yeah. Yeah, so the depth of the circuit. We can execute each layer in parallel, but the time it's going to take is the depth. But in terms of energy, size of the circuit, if, if we were thinking of, yeah, we were actually doing a circuit. Now, we're counting NAND gates. Is that the right thing to be counting if we care about the number of operations? If we're actually making it in silicon, it's a pretty good thing to count. Most of you in your pocket have a few billion NAND gates. They're cheap. The processor on your phone, if you've got a laptop, you, you have more than a few billion probably. NAND gates are cheap, and we can make lots of them. But if we're computing a function, so this is where if it's a universal circuit, then we can compute any circuit with that. So you could say that makes sense, but it's a pretty expensive way to compute. If you look at processors, they don't just have NAND gates. At least that's not the instruction that you're running. If we didn't care about cost, Intel only needs to give us one instruction. 
but they built thousands of instructions into the processor to support more efficient programs.